Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to this tutorial slash guide I'm bringing you guys today. This is going to be, uh, I felt like turning uh, something into a series on basically how to be a streamer because I have two other videos for streaming tutorials out and I have a bunch more I can make and the two I already have made, which by the way, there's going to be linked in the description uh, if you want to go check those out. The two I have made have get, did really, really good uh, for positive reviews and helped a lot of people out and I know a lot about this stuff. So I thought, why not share the knowledge, uh, help people out? I don't know. So this one is going to be where I should have started is uh, best settings to use for OBS or open broadcast software. If you guys don't know, that is one of the best streaming softwares out in my opinion and it's free. So if you guys don't have it for some reason, make sure you go and download it, check it out. It'll be in the description below at obsproject.com. And uh, yeah, let's get into this. So it's going to be a streamception here for a second. You're going to see backgrounds instead of backgrounds. So when you open this up, you're not going to have any scenes, any sources. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to amazingly go over settings and briefly talk about this at the end. So into settings. So the general tab is all personal preference. You can read those. Nothing too big there. But the encoding tab is where we get started. You're going to want your encoder to your CPU. So 2x64. Use custom bitrate is going to be checkmarked. Enable CBR padding is going to be checkmarked. And use custom buffer size is going to be uncheckmarked. Now your max bitrate depends on your internet speed and your internet speed um you should probably know it it's going to be prioritized on your upload so if you don't know what your upload is you can go to speedtest.net or the link for that will be in the description below you can click begin test and it's going to show you your internet speed and once you're done with the test the test probably only takes two minutes you're going to see this and this is going to be the final product. It'll show your ping, which we're not really looking at, your download, which we're not really looking at, and your upload. So depending on what your upload is, I would suggest bare minimum being five, and I wouldn't go lower than that. Could you do it with four? Yes, one under one, one, two, and three. Um, it's just not gonna cut it. The quality is going to be really fuzzy and pixely, and it's just not worth it, so. Yeah, if you're wondering how to get more upload, unfortunately, the only way you can do that is contact your service pro internet service provider, ask for an upgrade, or switch to a different internet company. But if you have four upload, it could be possible, but I'd suggest five or more. So in here, you never want to go over 3,500 bit, right? If you have five upload or more, or especially six, seven, eight more, you can run 3,500. That's what the max is max allowed on Twitch, and that's what you know they want you to run. Or not want you to run, but that's what the max is. I would suggest going 2,500. That's because it's, one, you're going to free up more internet space. So especially if you're playing an online game, you're going to need that bandwidth. But 2,500 is a solid quality. And people tend to not have good internet. Not only do you have to have internet to stream, but you also have to have, to have a bit of internet to watch streams. So if you're streaming in 3,000, 3,500 bit rate, um, people are going to experience buffing, buffering on your stream and then they're going to complain about it. So set this to 2500 and it's going to be a solid quality and you're not going to complain about buffering. And if they are complaining about buffering, we'll talk about that in a second. Kodak AAC, format 48 hertz, channel stereo, bitrate, you can rock at 112 or if you have if you have some solid internet, I turn mine up to 128. It kind of depends on what you feel there. Broadcast settings, um is going to be in live stream streaming service is twitch uh you fms url is your host what obs is going to be hosting off of now um now that depends on where you live so there's a bunch of options here uh and, and there's some in asia australia eu south america uh oops um and then all in the US East and Central and stuff like that. So the one that's going to be the best host and the best ping is going to be the one closest to you. So select the one closest to you. File path stream key. That's your stream key that lets you go live. You can go to twitch.tv backslash dashboard. Twitch.tv dot TV backslash dashboard to get your stream link. As long as you're signed into the account, you can show stream key and get it. If someone gets your stream key, that means anyone can stream for your account. So there is a reset key button under the dashboard as well. If someone finds it auto reconnect is if you want your stream to auto reconnect, if day, uh, Daisy, if uh, your OBS crashes, I don't use it, but you can 
file path is where uh, you can automatically save stream file and then change a set of file path and it will autom it will record your video as well as when you're streaming so you can have a if you don't want the twitch file you can have a raw file of your whole stream recording that will automatically record while you're streaming and it'll save your computer if you go if you are a type of guy that wants to upload highlights to YouTube or something Video, uh, video tab is going to be set to your graphics card. Custom is going to be set to your monitor resolution, which is most likely 1920 by 1080, then 16 by 9. So this resolution downscale, um, if you're going to stream in 1080, it would be 1920 by 1080. I personally would not stream in 1080p. Um, I would stream in 720p. So you change it to 1.50-1280 by 720p because, once again, 1080p, people might experience buffering. So that's why I do 720p. Filter, if you have a bad CPU, you're going to run at the fastest. If you have a decent or okay CPU, you're going to run at good detail 16 samples. If you have a very good CPU, you know, a very high end i7, you can run at best detail 36 samples. FPS, uh, you can stream at 60 FPS. If you are playing a game like GTA, Call of Duty, where your computer is getting a solid 60 FPS, run it at 60 FPS if you feel like you want to do that. If you're playing early access games like, uh, well, I'm, I, don't, I don't play any early access games, but DayZ, so I'm just going to name DayZ, for example, you don't get 60 FPS at all times. So it's really choppy. So I would suggest running 30 FPS. I haven't heard anybody complain about buffering issues at 60, but if you want to run 60, you can. If not, then 30 there. That's a very quick sick fix. 3060, very simple. Disable Aereo. It disables your Aereo theme. As you can see, my background and my oh, I have it cut off. But the background changes to like just a Windows like 95 style, and it only does it when the program's open, and it'll change right back once the program's closed. But it makes OBS run a lot smoother just by check marking that. I'd really do that. Audio desktop audio device set that to whatever you your headset or your speakers if you want them to hear what you're hearing if they want you to if they if you want them to hear your mic then set your microphone um, if your microphone is quiet you can put a uh, microphone boost here and mess around with that or if you're maybe you're on team speak you're playing music and it's really quiet then you could like mine is for example you can put a desktop boost on there and mess around with that uh, under the hotkeys, if you'd like a push to talk hotkey, if you're using that, if you want to mi mute, mu mute mic and unmute or start and stop stream hotkey, you can set it here. Advanced, I don't want to touch up too much about this and you really shouldn't be messing around with it. So go ahead, pause the video or whatever. And these mostly except maybe here, here and here are preset. Uh, shouldn't are the ones that aren't preset, but everything else should be preset. Pause the video here, you know, look through it, make sure you have everything set properly. And that's it there. So those are your settings. So now you should have your settings adjusted to your computer and your, you know, internet. So your scenes, you can add a scene, name it, whatever. And here you can, these are what you can add. If you're capturing your window, you can do it like that and capture a window. If you want to capture your monitor, you know, that's probably not it. But for gaming, you just right click, add a game capture, uh, name it, whatever. And then here it will show you. You know, your game will come up if you're, you know, have it open. So you can set it to GTA, for instance, stretch image to screen, ignore aspect ratio, click OK, and then GTA will pop up. And that goes for any game. Or if you're using an Elgato or a game capture for your console, you right click and add video capture device. And then um, up here, when you I don't have any plugged in, obviously, but your Elgato will show up here or your PVR, or whatever you're using, Roxio. Or also, if you want a webcam, your, this is how you add a webcam. Your webcam shows up here, and then here's all your settings for it. So all that stuff is pretty straightforward. I'm sure you guys can figure that out. It's just a game capture. If you want to add an image to block something, you can add it here. If you want to do a slideshow, you can add some text. You know, it's all very straightforward stuff after that in your scenes and sources. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will respond. If this helped you out, make sure you smack that like button so other people can find this video and we can get it out there. If you want to see more tips and tutorials and gameplay from me, make sure you smack that subscribe button. If you guys are into Twitch or Twitter, I'm on both those websites you can check me out in the description below i was your host today i want to thank you guys for rocking with me i hope this cleared up some things about obs and until next time have a good one